evening uh, everyone who is participating uh, to this session. My name is uh, Rusanda Kurke and I am the directress of the Coalition of Independent Cultural Sector from Republic of Moldova. Uh, uh, the coalition initiated uh, a series of meetings uh, on uh, public civic partnership talks for open cultural spaces, uh, where models of uh, part participatory governance of public infrastructure for the uh, independent cultural sector will be presented and discussed as an innovative model of uh, democracy. Uh, public civic partnerships uh, represent an alternative to public-private partnership and a new institutional design where the democratic agency of citizens is coupled uh, with the institutional stability of public administration. So this partnership hold a transformative power as they emerge as attempts of commoning and demands to democratize urban governance regimes. And uh, if to speak uh, shortly about the context, uh, like uh, about the context, you, you can uh, read more on our uh, wage pad, the web page. Uh, but we we conclude uh, the situation uh, each uh, that um, the public policies in Moldova favors the commercialization of the public infrastructure, even of the cultural infrastructure, and we faced uh, the last years uh, the disappearance uh, of uh, a lot of uh, cultural public infrastructure, uh, which was uh, demolished or or uh, privatized, and we don't have uh, any regulation that uh, will uh, encourage uh, citizens' involvement in the uh, governance of uh, the public goods uh, and the public uh, uh, cultural infrastructure. And uh, uh, today we uh, invited um, um, my colleague uh, from uh, Ljubljana, uh, Meta Stuller. I um, met her in Amsterdam in uh, one of um, in one project called uh, the Vital Voices, and she was uh, telling me about the processes of creating a rock center which we will present today. Uh, Rock Center is a, a former uh, bike factory, uh, which uh, is one of the most important pieces uh, uh, of the 20th century industrial heritage in Ljubljana, Slovenia. And now it's serving as a public space for the production of cultural and creative industries. Uh, and uh, META, it's uh, an experienced research, research and development specialist uh, working at the intersection of cultural development, creative industries, cultural heritage and new technologies. Uh, during her career, she was developed uh, deve several successful projects and advised various governmental, non-governmental, and intergovernmental organization, as well as private companies. And currently, she is employed as a public servant uh, in the role of uh, strategic directrice uh, and development and program, uh, on development and programs of uh, Rock Center, uh, which is uh, this municipal institution uh, dedicated to sustainable design and uh, the team that worked on the governance model of Rock Center received the, the prestigious EuroCities Innovation Award in 2018. So Meta, I was really, let's say, fascinated about uh, this model, Rock model that uh, you with your team developed and I will uh, give you now the floor um, to present it and to tell us uh, more about it. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Rosanda, for inviting me. Uh, I have to say that uh, in Amsterdam, everybody was inspired by everybody. It was my first experience with people from Moldova and also from Central Asia. 
And uh, I really uh, was inspired by what you are doing in uh, Moldova with your uh, organization. And uh, I know what kind of hard work this is because I used to work for similar organization in Slovenia in 2010. Uh, which was also in 2008, I'm sorry, which was also uh, uh, some kind of association of non-governmental organizations and freelancers in the field of culture fighting for uh, better working conditions uh, uh, for themselves. Uh, I have discovered, of course, that we are a little bit uh, in front of you, but I think that we had similar histories although we were not in Slovenia under Soviet Union, but that uh, we had similar si histories, si similar socialist system, et cetera, similar construction of the institutions. And that's why uh, I think uh, uh, I can humbly, you know, <laughs> give you some advice and, and share some experience because I think it can be useful maybe uh, uh, for you because you can implement it maybe directly to your situation. Um, I will show you shortly what uh, Center Rogue is about. Rosandra already told, told you. Uh, I will go uh, shortly through my slides and documents. And then uh, I hope we will have time for questions, for your questions. If you have some, I will be really happy to answer you uh, anything uh, in my power. And uh, for what I said already, I have been um, working as freelancer for 25 years and for the past two years and a half, I'm a public servant. So I have really experience on all sides of, <laughs> of, uh, of uh, cultural system. And uh, I know what are troubles of public servants. I know what are troubles of municipalities and also what are troubles of uh, cultural workers. And sometimes uh, you just need really good translation so that all those people can understand each other and make uh, something better from, from what the resources they already have. So maybe I can share my screen now, if you agree, Rosanda. Please, I think Zoom agrees also. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's go. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Let's yeah. See. So in fact, uh, as Rosanda told you, Rock Center uh, is in fact a municipal development uh, project uh, that, is, uh, that is made in the old factory, old bicycle factory on 8,500 square meters of surface. Already in 1995, the municipality of Ljubljana decided that this uh, big factory, this is the big factory, will be dedicated to culture field. However, later on, there were difficult, different political and economical situations. So the city of Ljubljana didn't implement the project uh, so fast as they thought they would. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, it was, uh, it was the, 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 the place was also squatted in 2006. And it was in fact inhabited by different groups of activists, artists, et cetera. Uh, that uh, had this ideology of using uh, this kind of uh, um, deserted public spaces until the local community decides what to do about it. So uh, the local community decided quite fast, like in 2007, that uh, this would become a new, uh, new space for design, architecture, and... Uh, and um, um, maker sculpture, and uh, they have invited me in 2010, uh, in fact, to uh, to guide to manage a European project. It was called Second Chance, and uh, the goal of this project was to recalibrate the plans of the city of Ljubljana about this place, the old factory rock, because in the beginning the city of Ljubljana wanted to, in fact, do a, a public-private partnership as it was fashionable around 2010, you know. But uh, as we know, uh, in 2008, there was this big uh, economical crisis. And of course, all the private partners just disappeared because they didn't have any money anymore. And uh, we think that maybe this was also 
luck for us somehow and for the citizens of Ljubljana because the very ambitious project, you know, of revitalizing the old factory, but also of building a big hotel near it, an uh, enormous exhibition hall, etc. cetera. Uh, this big uh, plan was too ambitious. There wasn't enough money for it. And that's why the city of Ljubljana had to downscale the project. And they had invited me to manage this project to see uh, how to recalibrate this project for the purposes of after the crisis time. So in fact, with my colleagues, we have opened this project really largely uh, to all kinds of stakeholders. I will show you this. And in fact, uh, these stakeholders uh, uh, that were uh, between 2010 and 2012, where the research and development project uh, was going on, uh, were around 300. And they were discussing with us what to do with this factory, uh, how to plan the, the, the programs, how to manage it, etc. Of course, they have uh, crashed all the plans of the city of Ljubljana, but this is good because, you know, uh, they were the future users and they, with I think that the users, they know the best, you know, what they need. So no planner from outside shouldn't tell them what, what they need, but they should tell to the city themselves what they need. And uh, I, myself, and my team were some kind of catalyzers of those needs, of those ideas, et cetera. So uh, at the end of this research project, we have made, we have developed a small uh, prototype that was called Roglab. You, you see here the small picture, but in fact, this is this prototype. And in fact, it's, uh, it's a 28 square meters big uh, fab lab where we were uh, in fact testing the results of the research, uh, that is the partnerships, the programs, the management uh, models, et cetera. And we were in fact uh, testing this uh, with more than 6,000 users from 2012 until 2019. In 2019, we uh, made, uh, we revised the plans with uh, 40 stakeholders who then confirmed the final plan and uh, in 2021, the city of Ljubljana started to implement uh, this project based on the plans that the stakeholders proposed. Of course, uh, I have to tell you that uh, uh, this is like most of the big uh, development projects. Also, this development project didn't go without uh, conflicts because there were many, many interest groups that wanted to have this place for themselves from people who spotted the place before, to people who had the ideas that those, this should be flats, from to, to the municipality who had another ideas, et cetera. And our role of me and my group was somehow to, in fact, to negotiate all these interests and to, uh, to, to, to somehow uh, un analyze them and to propose the plans that was the best for, for, for everybody somehow. Unfortunately, the city of Ljubljana and the former users, the squatters, didn't agree on, on how to use this place uh, uh, further. And uh, uh, unfortunately, they uh, didn't uh, end their relationship in a dialogical way, and they were evicted from this factory. So this, um, uh, I was very sorry about it, especially because at the beginning of my work, we were in really good relationship with the, the people who spotted the place. But in between, the generations uh, changed, and the ones uh, who were there at the beginning and who was, were saying that they would be using the places for uh, temporary use, this was their ideology, as I have mentioned. Those people were then replaced by some people who uh, demanded uh, the eternal use of this space. Uh, no strings attached, and the city of Ljubljana couldn't agree with it, so they went to the to the also to the to the court, and the court decided they have to leave the the place. So sadly, this was this is one of the we couldn't agree with everybody, but uh, but with some of the users from the former squad, we're still in a very good relationship, like with uh, people who were working with migrant communities. Uh, there are partners, also the people who were like um, 
or like uh, erased from the citizenship of Slovenia. This was uh, somehow uh, administrative, uh, one big administrative flop of our government. We erased almost 30,000 people uh, during this transition uh, from Slovenian citizenship. And they had uh, uh, those activists, they had their headquarters in the former squad. And now we are also working with them because we have named the park in front of the center rock after them. And just tomorrow we are in fact uh, opening the exhibition of the, the monument that will remind us uh, of this big injustice. So anyway, uh, Rogue Lab was a really small, small uh, place uh, where, uh, where all this testing was going on. And I just wanted to show you how uh, this uh, participation of stakeholders went. So from 2010 to 2012, we had almost 300, we had 300 stakeholders uh, involved in research and development project within a second chance European project where we have defined the concept of the new institution. In 2013, this is important. Uh, I was also working for the municipality of Ljubljana as advisor for their uh, strategy of culture. And uh, uh, we have in fact introduced the public civic partnership concept into the strategy of the uh, culture of Ljubljana. Why this is important? Because if you will be working on something like this, you have to think of uh, different strategies, you have to think of different laws, and you have to think uh, when uh, the strategies are written and discuss with your, uh, with your um, decision makers what goes into this strategy and what not. Because then you can build on this strategy and you are somehow opening the space you know, for your interest in that way. Why was it possible for me to, to, to work in this way with the strategy of culture of Ljubljana? Because before that, as I told you in 2008, I was uh, working uh, with, uh, uh, on advocacy of a similar organizations as, as yours. And with this organization of NGOs, we have uh, achieved uh, uh, something that is called structured dialogue with decision makers on local level and on, on national level. What is structured dialogue? Structured dialogue is in fact uh, meetings where the representatives of civil society meet the decision makers and they discuss about, uh, about uh, different needs. And uh, those meetings, they have to be really, they have to have good minutes and they also really have to have, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, next steps and uh, action plans. Otherwise, it's just talk, 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 and never, nothing never happens. So, in fact, you have to find, in fact, the way, the mechanism, how to, how to, how, how the civil servants and the, the decision makers um, then uh, are obliged somehow to realize the the, the proposals and the agreements that uh, that were made in this kind of structured dialogue. So, uh, yeah, in this time, already in two thousand eight. Uh, with this organization, we started the structured dialogue with the city of Ljubljana, which prepared also um, the, the floor for this kind of projects that uh, I was later working on. Uh, I didn't know that I would work on this project, but for whoever who wants to, to, to change something, who wants to propose something, there is this mechanism now, uh, mechanism now which, where those things are being discussed. And also where people somehow learn how things are being discussed, how you negotiate stuff and so on. So you don't just come to decision makers and say, we need this and this and this, do that, you know, because they cannot do like that. Uh, um, they cannot work like that. They also have to follow certain rules, uh, certain laws, etc. So for the NGOs, it's really important to know the laws, to know the rules, so you can know what you can demand and what are the what are also the 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 um, the, what is the frame of the, the those uh, decision makers and what are the what is the what is in their power to change and what is in their power to propose to you so so it's very important to inform yourself about that it's very important to know when the strategies are written you know uh, and to demand that the strategies should be discussed in a in a broader audience it's uh, very important to know uh, uh, when 
and how the laws can be open because this is really, really difficult, you know, to open the law, you have to go on the level of the state of your parliament and so on. So it's not just like, okay, we want this and this and this, and then like uh, just put it in the law. Yeah, it doesn't go like that, you know. And uh, uh, so um, you have to know where to introduce, you know, your, uh, where to put somehow how to say your leg on uh, between the doors you know so you can uh, open your 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 um, entrance to the to the decision making uh so between 2012 and 2019 we had more than 6000 users so uh, individual users and stakeholders who were involved in the rog lab prototyping phase the prototyping phase means that uh, we have used Roglab as a, as a, as a, in fact, product design object, you know, and uh, we have, in fact, used the prototyping method also of developing it because uh, prototyping, uh, introducing and involving users uh, in early phases of prototypes means that the users will still have the, the this option to participate really into the design of the product, uh, into design of the new institution. And also while you know designing it, co-designing it, they see directly results of what they are doing. And also in this way, they're appropri appropriating these institutions more for themselves. Why is it important that the users or the, or the audiences they appropriate uh, uh, public institutions because they, then they will take care of them, then they will uh, come and uh, see the concerts, the performances, etc. They will uh, take it as their home, and that means that the institution in this way will also become sustainable because sustainability is not just about how money you how much money you have. We all know that the sustainability of the institutions is also about the audiences. And if uh, you know, we saw this in Slovenia during the during the um, the COVID, that many many institutions who have can have a lot of money, but uh, who somehow uh, stopped working, you know, during the COVID. But on the other side, we have small organizations who didn't have a lot of money, but they have big communities. And they were, were still active during the COVID, et cetera. So uh, I think this is also very much important. And this is a lesson that we have learned. And we have seen that which is the most, one of the most important thing for the institution is to have their good and uh, faithful audiences also. Uh, why is it important for Center Rock to become a public institution? Why the city of Ljubljana and the stakeholders decided about it? but not about like giving this institution to some kind of NGO. Because uh, in Slovenia, we have law that when the city or the muni municipality or the, the, the state uh, founds an institution, then by the law, they're they, they, they have the obligation to finance it also. So for us, it was very important that we have this regular financement and that uh, like uh, for electricity, for space, for uh, the managers, et cetera. And then by this regular financing, we can really offer a good service to, to the citizens, to the NGOs and to the, also to the, to the companies, uh, private companies who want to use this space and who want to use the services of our labs, for example, if I will uh, tell you about them a little bit later. So, uh, in 2019, we have the revision of the plans of Center Rock by 40 stakeholders that have, uh, they had still some comments, but more or less they have confirmed everything that we were developing. And in 2021, the, uh, the, the city started to implement uh, and to build, to, re to revitalize this uh, old building uh, by the plans that we made. And uh, in 2021, we also started to, uh, we also developed uh, all the plans for our labs. We have seven uh, workshops in Center Rock on more, on more than 10, on more than 1,000 square meters. And uh, we have involved uh, seven groups of users uh, and uh, experts who uh, draw the, 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 the plans of the labs and also selected which kind of machines and which kind of equipment has to be in them so it would be useful for them. And then we already 
also with this, we were using this kind of prototyping uh, method that we were like, uh, like uh, we were, we were uh, planning and replanning and revising and replanning the, the plans until everybody was satisfied. So just in this moment, we have open call outside where we are searching for a company who will buy all this equipment for us so we can equip uh, center walk until uh, spring or uh, summer uh, this year. Uh, so uh, in 2022, we had a more soft uh, uh, approach to the programs, in fact, and to the audiences. And we have, uh, in fact, in uh, cooperation with European Cultural Foundation, uh, developed this uh, project that was called Shared Spaces, Shared Futures. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, this project involved 90 st stakeholders who were working on participatory budgeting and participatory governance of public institution that I will be telling you more about later, about systemic development of a cross-sector creative ecosystem. Why? Because the um, city of Ljubljana will offer spaces to, to, to NGOs and to creatives uh, in Center Rock. But in the meantime, the, our national government, uh, they don't, in fact, uh, they, they, they don't have subsidies for creatives that could, that the creatives could use for development of products and also for, uh, for living from those, for, uh, for, for living during the development phase. We have uh, quite a lot of money that is shoveled into the startups, digital startups. But these kind of startups that are developing uh, um, that are developing uh, physical products like uh, that are good for environment, that are good for people, they don't have anywhere to turn. So just in this moment, so this group of people have de has developed this kind of, uh, uh, in fact, an analysis analysis of uh, what is there, uh, who we have to contact, and so on. And now with uh, my director, Renata, who you have met also, Lysanda, in Amsterdam, we are visiting this, uh, um, these national institutions and ministries and talking with them, look, we are offering this, what are you offering? You know, So the advocacy goes on somehow. And uh, we also had a special group on uh, how to how to manage uh, and share green spaces of the center rock. Uh, we had a group of, for integration of migrants and refugees, because uh, I don't know how it is in in Moldova, but in Slovenia somehow we are pretending that those people they will go away someday but they're not going away. Some of them are staying and for them, it's very difficult to integrate into Slovenian culture because we're a very small country. We're 2 million, we know everybody. And you know, we are like somehow living within our culture closed like that uh, and within our families. And somehow well, we don't think about those people who are like crossing our country or staying here or want to stay here that they have difficulties with language, that they have difficulties with integration, et cetera. So we had a special group of NGOs that are dealing just with uh, those thematics who uh, made the uh, uh, strategy for integration of migrants and refugees uh, in our program, which we are already implementing because we already have two projects uh, in place uh, uh, where different um, members of migrant and refugee community are working with us in the workshop on uh, developing their products, etc. And then we have another group uh, that were, were, was working on diversity and gender equality plan because we have uh, found out that for uh, technical and technological institutions as Center Rock will be, and is it, it is already, that uh, gender equality is always you know, something that you have to fight for. Uh, during the time of Rogue Lab, uh, we already had 70% of women who were attending our workshops, our programs, and we want to uh, keep this trend going on. So that's why we will be also uh, searching for different, now we are just uh, searching for, for lab managers and hopefully we will find some great women to manage our labs also. <laughs> so in 2023, uh, we have the last, uh, we, the last stakeholders, well, one of the last stakeholders groups 
where we the 15 people have verified uh, our public call for partnerships. We have written a draft and then people came and then they said, ah, this is, this is shit. We don't understand that. Uh, this is not good and so on. And we went, okay, okay, we will do it differently. <laughs> so this call is now out and uh, I can share uh, or Rusanda can share you uh, um, the, the, the call for international partners. So if you find yourself in this in this uh, in this call, uh, you're very welcome to 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 respond to the call, and uh, we will be very happy to to work with you. Also, if you have uh, the programs that can be part of our program. So, uh, what is also also very important for institutions that are in development, or also for NGOs that want to achieve something, is communication. I have seen with many organizations that I've worked with that we're working like crazy, you know, like uh, like uh, bulls and cows and I don't know which animals. But then uh, at the end, we forget to communicate about what we are doing. And then we don't understand why nobody is praising us for, for what we did, you know, and why nobody is understanding what we do and so on. So communication is very important. And uh, I know that for NGOs, it's very difficult because uh, the more or less the, the situation of NGOs is, is like not even enough money, not enough time. You're doing the day-to-day -day management and then, you know, it's 10 o'clock in the evening and then you would also have to do the communication. So it's like never time for the communication. But I think it's very important to plan your time for, to, to communicate things because otherwise it's very difficult to succeed with your with your work. So in fact, for Center Rock, we also uh, invest, we are also investing quite a lot of time into communication. So we have re regular Zoom meetings with members of uh, public on diverse topics like uh, how to use, uh, uh, we, we, we are talking with them, uh, how they will be able to apply to free of charge individual studios, who will be able to apply to residential programs. Then we have special Zoom on job, uh, job openings. We have special Zooms on commercial rentals of shops and restaurant spaces, on uh, partnerships, et cetera. So in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, in this way, uh, in this way, uh, uh, the the interested the interested individuals or organizations can also learn about how they can uh, how they can work with us, etc. And they get the 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 message that everybody is welcome and that uh, no question is stupid and that we are open to everybody to to, to for cooperation. We also have monthly guided tours of construction site uh, for members of public. This is very popular and it's always like uh, sold out. <laughs> well, it's for free, but it's like all the all the places are taken. So as you see on this photo on the left, um, uh, everybody has to have uh, special caskets. So <laughs> we have to take care of the safety. And then we go through the construction site and we tell the story of the center rock to everybody of the of the history of this place of the secondary use of the development plans of how it will be used etc. So this is very important because in this way people also see that you know nobody is hiding any anything you can ask everything you can come here you can come here today tomorrow and then when it will be open you will be also able to come here. And also, um, and this is, uh, we've seen that this direct communication is very good. Uh, we also have different public presentations of research and development uh, results. On the right hand, you, you can see the presentation of our, um, of the, this uh, project, shared spaces, shared, uh, shared futures. Uh, we think it's important to present this kind of stuff uh, because, uh, in this way, we can get feedback from the audience and we can even imp improve our project even more. So, and we also have different hands-on workshops because uh, when you want to communicate about what you will be doing, it's the best to invite people to work with you and then, you know, they understand what it is about somehow. So now I will go fastly through the plans of this uh, rock center. So you can see on the ground floor, uh, we have uh, several labs. We have a cookery lab with show cooking room. 
Why do we have a cookery lab? Because we think that food is really something that connects everybody. And uh, it's also very important for migrant population because even if you're, I don't know, right wing, whatever, you know, uh, you still like uh, good food from South, you know. So this is our experience in Slovenia. You know, even if you are like some kind of Slovenian redneck, you will still be eating cevapčići, which are from Bosnia, for example. So we think that uh, cookery is really something, uh, and cuisine is really something that connects people. So that's why we thought it was important to, to integrate it in, into our uh, center. We will have a 3D lab, uh, like a normal fab lab with uh, electro lab and, and uh, recycling station, a metal lab, uh, wood lab, uh, a green lab, which will be more or less about uh, developing new materials for designers, architects, and also artisans, glass and ceramic lab with a shop. Uh, and then we will have uh, not seven, but six shops because um, uh, just now we have decided that probably we will make also one other lab for, for jewelry because uh, there was uh, this association of jewelry makers that came to us and they said, yeah, but uh, we are so many and we don't have any, play, any place to work and uh, we would need, really need that and so on. And then we said, okay, if you're really so many, then you have to propose some kind of, you know, idea. Uh, if we make this kind of hub, if you will be, uh, if you you will be able to help to manage it and to work in it and so on. So they proposed this idea, and we said, okay, we will try to we will try to develop this lab also. So what I wanted to say with this that uh, when you plan a new institution, you shouldn't think that okay. Uh, in September, there will be opening and then our work is over, you know. It, you have always, you have to always, you know, be open for new developments. You always have to listen to the needs of people to see what else you can offer. Uh, if maybe some place is not in use, you should change it to something else. So development doesn't end when the, the, the new institution opens, you know. Uh, it's not a museum, it should be a living institution and uh, in this kind, as a production space, we also want to cherish, cherish somehow the, 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 the memory of workers that used to work here. It's a production space. We want to work here. We want to show what we know, what, what, what we know to do, and so on. So it's, uh, for us, this is very important. So uh, behind the, the factory, there will be 8,000 square meters of public, new public park, uh, just uh, green park. With the neighbors uh, of the factory, we have talked in a special workshops and we asked them how they want to use this park and what they need in this park and so on. And they expressed the need that uh, the park shouldn't be defined, everything shouldn't be defined right away, but that uh, we define it gradually together. So uh, we just um, um, have decided uh, that we would plant some trees, like fruit trees for eating, and then uh, we won't make any children playground because we will see later what kind of children playground they need or if they need the children playground maybe children can just run around as we as we used to in in, in my youth you know so so we we left it open somehow for people and our small rock lab is now not situated in the embankments of Ljubljanica anymore but it is always already transferred to the to the park, and uh, this summer it will be trans uh, transformed into a small coffee shop uh, uh, in the park, and all the contents will go, of course, into the new labs. So uh, in the second floor, in the in the first floor, we have uh, a new public library which is in fact an institution within an institution. Why we decided to put a library into this place because uh, we have discovered during our research that in Slovenia, we have very elitistic uh, uh, cultural, cultural uh, policies and that many people don't dare to enter museums, theaters, et cetera. That's why we have put public library into, into our rock center because public libraries are really the most democratic institutions ever invented in the history of, uh, of our civilization. 
And when you come to a public library, nobody will ask you if you read philosophy or, you know, love romances or whatever. They will just give you what you need and, and support you. And this is, this is this kind of culture, professional culture we want to develop in Center Rock also. So you don't judge people what they do, if it's aesthetic, if it's not aesthetic, whatever. Just we will support you in, in your work. And we also have a big uh, uh, exhibition hall here, which is uh, uh, 610 meters big. Uh, it will be it will be uh, used for uh, different organizations that are preparing, I don't know, uh, fashion fashion shows and stuff like that, or for uh, final exhibitions of uh, our universities in the field of design and uh, and architecture. Um, uh, the number four is a small uh, um, is a, is a small uh, lecture hall uh, on thousand square on hundred square meters that can be used uh, also uh, for small lectures or conferences etc. It will be also for shared use. Um, I don't know if I have stipulated enough, but we have uh, conceived Center Rock as a shared space. Uh, in the sense that uh, we don't have, like, we will have like 10% of the program that I and the team will define, but 90% of the program will be will be uh, by our partners, uh, because we have seen that uh, we don't, in fact, need another big institution that will make new programs, but we need a big institution that will offer space and service to small organizations that are already very good in their, in their jobs. So in this floor, uh, we have uh, individual working spaces that will be given away for free for the time of three years to companies, NGOs, uh, or individual creatives who are, which are developing products, not art, but products, uh, uh, useful products uh, that are uh, following uh, uh, sustainable goals in the sense that they're not harmful for environment and they are needed by the by the people so we don't produce another chair you know and then market it until we die so somebody buys it but we really will support you know organizations that are thinking of environment that are not thinking of, 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 of hyper production, of hyper consumption, et cetera, but that are really thinking of what, what, what is needed, you know. So those places will be not just given away for free to local organizations, but also from for to anybody who wants to come from anywhere from the world, also for to people from Moldova. But of course, if you use this kind of space, then you have to move to Ljubljana. <laughs> you don't have to learn Slovenian, but you have to move to Ljubljana and you have to rent a place in Ljubljana or something if you want to work here. So people who will get these places for free, for three years, they will be also uh, be able uh, to use all the labs for free and all the technical support for free. Uh, now we have this, uh, this uh, public uh, call for partners. And in this public call for partners, we're also searching for organizations who can support these, uh, these creatives in the field of uh, business plans and stuff like that, because we have many organizations who are good in this stuff. And we said that we will not just offer now another you know, business, uh, business incubation program because there are any, many other organizations who are already offering it. And we prefer to pair with them, to, to, to work with them, and to, to let them do what they do the best. So in this floor, there will be also one uh, photo studio and multimedia studio where people will be able to, to, to will have all the equipment to take photos and videos of their products. And there will be also part of a textile lab that uh, because uh, as an anecdote, you know, when we were planning the, the equipment of the labs, uh, everybody had, nobody had enough space, no group had enough space. You know, we had, okay, you have 100 sandwich. Yeah, we would just need 20 more or 50 more and so on. And you know, <laughs> so it's, uh, the needs are big, you know, but uh, here, even if we have uh, 8,500 square meters big place, you know, it was not enough, you know. 
So one of these uh, places here uh, will be, five of those places will be big 500 square meters and 19 of them will be big uh, 50 square meters. So one of those who is big 500 square meters uh, will, be co will be shared with the University of Ljubljana. We're just signing an agreement with the University of Ljubljana and uh, the faculties who are producing uh, producing different products uh, like uh, useful products and applied arts, uh, they will be able to use this 100 square meters classroom for their interdisciplinary projects. Uh, we did that because many of our uh, faculties, they don't have in fact uh, their own workshops or they do have workshops, but they're you know mostly closed or you know there's no technician, et cetera. And the, the University of Ljubljana was thinking for years already that they would have to do this kind of shared workshop. But then we came because we were working with many of those faculties and uh, like uh, like Academy of Arts, like uh, Faculty of uh, Natural Sciences, et cetera, and Faculty of Architecture. And we said, okay, it doesn't make sense, you know, that you're building a new building and spending millions of euros, et cetera, if we can share one space for your uh, multi, uh, multi uh, disciplinary projects. And then you also can work on, on your seminars, uh, on your practical uh, seminars in, the, in, the, in our labs during the mornings where the general audience is not coming because general audience is coming to Rogue Lab already now more or less in the afternoons or in the evenings. So we will have the labs open to general audience in the afternoons and in the evenings. And during the mornings, it will be open to closed groups to the University of Ljubljana, uh, and to other schools, primary schools, or kindergartens, etc. Uh, so we will also have one place of 100 square meters to uh, dedicated to young professionals who are just coming from uh, from the faculty, who are just finishing their studies, and are entering into their professional life. Why? Because we have discovered during this, uh, during this, uh, um, oh, it's my dog who is playing there. <laughs> uh, we were just, we just discovered during this uh, testing phase that we lose a lot of young creatives uh, on when they, they are passing through from their student life to professional life, because uh, all of a sudden they don't have any support from their mentors, from professors anymore. They don't have access to the to the to the uh, to the tools to the to the machines anymore that they had access to in school, and then they need money, of course, and then they start to work in H and M or in you know different shops, and we are losing young people who are on the top of their creativity because we have nothing to offer to them. So we have decided that we will uh, we will make this program that is called Young Drog and uh, that uh, every year we will, we will choose together with the universities and schools uh, 10 or 15 young creatives uh, who will get uh, space for free uh, and also all technical support for free and some money for materials that they will be using for their products. It's a very complex institution, I know, but you know, <laughs> just stop me if I'm too too long. So here in this floor, we have many more uh, individual spaces. Um, number three, it's our offices. Number two, it's uh, it's uh, five residential studios on um, 300 square meters that we hope we will be able also to to co-use with some institution or organization from Moldova because the, the, the goal of these uh, residential spaces is also to exchange creatives, not just to, to invite creatives, uh, foreign creatives to, to Slovenia, but also to, to make such kind of exchange programs of regular exchange programs with uh, different, uh, different states. Uh, yeah, I have told you that, uh, that our call for partnerships is out. And also in this call for international partnership, there is this option that you can come for study visit. You have to pay for your travel, but you can stay then in uh, Ljubljana for in, in Center Rock for two or three nights. Uh, so we can show you everything and you can see in this way if, uh, if there is uh, interest for you to, to work with us uh, at all. <laughs> 
So this is us for now, uh, and uh, you see Roglev, which is transferred into the into the patio already. Behind Roglev, there is the big the big brother, <laughs> Santa Rog. And uh, in fact, uh, this is our team for now. And now we are also searching for new technicians, for new uh, for new uh, lab managers, etc., and uh, also uh, mentors. So uh, this group is growing and hopefully you will uh, be able to join us in one way or another uh, and work with us. Yeah, so, Meta, I, yeah, I, if we are, uh, are speaking uh, about the group, uh, the team, I would uh, also uh, want to uh, ask you to talk about a bit about the governance mm -hmm. uh, of this uh, center. Yeah. The uh, model. Yeah, our center is fact is a very classical um, institution in the sense of construction. It's in fact uh, it has a director and then it has two deputy directors. That is me and another colleague, and then you know project managers and technicians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, since uh, since uh, our users told us that they didn't want to have this kind of character hierarchical institution, we were thinking of how to make it a little bit softer and how to, how to, uh, how to give away the power, you know, from our side, you know, uh, uh, we have the, the, the institutional power, like uh, the director, the biggest, and then all the others would be smaller, and how to share this power to the users, to the partners, organizations, and so on. And that's why we have developed this uh, new model of governance where uh, I can show you a new document, just a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you see it? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is in fact the, 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 those are the guidelines that the group that I was telling you about made for us. And it's about participatory budgeting and other uh, uh, the elements of user participation in Santa Rock. So uh, those are implementation guidelines that we will follow. We are already implementing them in the way that, in fact, for example, now we are developing our web page, and within the web page, we will also have the the uh, digital support for user participation, and we are also developing the the uh, access system. This access system is, oh, this is my dog, <laughs> who wants to go out. <laughs> uh, so uh, this access system is about uh, the doors, in fact. Uh, we, want to, we want to offer this institution, you know, uh, 24 hours per day for certain users, not for everybody, but for people who will be using the, 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 the residential spaces, the individual spacers, or for super users of the labs who, who are masters of their work, you know, they will be able to, to use this place 24 hours a day. So, uh, everybody, every member of Center Rock will have a special card, like a credit card. And on this card, you know, they will have also, uh, it will work as a key also. And with this key, they will be able to access different rooms, different workshops, etc. Also, when uh, the institution will be uh, like uh, closed, like for public at nine o'clock in the evening, for example. Uh, with this card, uh, they will be also, and with the membership, they will be also able to participate in the uh, in the in the uh, voting of the the, the annual uh, participatory budget. At the beginning, we will put something like thirty thousand euros in the participatory budget, and the uh, uh, individual users will be able to then propose their uh, ideas what they want to use this money for. And uh, together we will vote for all the ideas, also not just the users, but also the people who are employed, the external mentors, uh, the residents, et cetera. Everybody will, will vote. And then we will use free project that will be, that will be uh, um, in fact financed uh, uh, yearly through this participatory budget. What will be possible to, 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 to finance through this budget 
we want a new machine because this one is not okay. We want a new program. We want to have an education on management. We want to this, we want that, you know, and people will be able to like uh, the, the majority will be decide what the money will be, will be uh, spent for. Then we will see, we will discuss if this budget will be heightened or not, you know, and uh, how it works. And, uh, and uh, this group of people, they uh, made a very good structure of how we have to implement those guidelines. They also uh, uh, search for the legal and formal background and the program framework uh, uh, for the center rock. Uh, they, uh, in fact, uh, also uh, told us that, in fact, you cannot just tell people, okay, now you vote and now you do this and now you do that but you have to train people and educate them, uh, uh, the staff and the users, how, uh, to, how, to, how to use this participatory governance tool at the center rock. So this is not something that is obvious. Uh, and uh, they propose as the timeline of the implementation that we have to stick to. <laughs> so uh, in fact, uh, they also proposed, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the rules of participatory governments of Center Rock and the draft procedure, procedural manual of, for the implementation of participatory budgeting. So those are all the uh, documents that we will be using during uh, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when um, in fact, we will be implementing when Center Rock opens in, uh, 2000, uh, in September 2023. So we can go fast through these documents so you can see it. There were big discussions about uh, everything also. We also had to define what we mean by user participation. This is very important because uh, to, to, to decide commonly what is user participation, what is decision-making or participatory governance, et cetera. What is co-creation? What is social inclusion? Because we are in fact uh, using these words like here and there, and, and we don't sometimes, we don't uh, understand that everybody understand those things differently, you know, and then we don't understand each other. So it's very good to get a common ground, common definition about those things, things so everybody knows what, what anybody else is talking about. So uh, we will be also involving the users in development of contents and programs. And uh, we will be doing it also not just in the way of the, 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 uh, uh, the, the participatory budgeting, but we will be also inviting users to different commissions. For example, when we will have uh, not in the first commission for the, for the, for the uh, individual, uh, individual studios, but for the second one where we already will have individual studio users. Why? Because in fact, um, in many cases, uh, for example, what we've seen with artistic residences in, in Slovenia, people, once they get this kind of residency space or once they get this kind of studio, they never want to get out then. Why? Because there is a lack of places, you know. So what we did is, in fact, we will, we will in fact, involve, involve the first generation of users of this individual studio into selection of the second generation. So, you know, if you don't want to get out, you know, and see the place to somebody else, then at least you're a little bit ashamed, you know, and in this way, you're also somehow, somehow in this way, you're also uh, getting used to the idea that, you know, this place is not forever, it's for three years, but if you come up with a, with, with a new project, with a new product, you can, you can, you can come back, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not forever, but it's not, you can never come back, you know. So uh, uh, the participants will be having the, uh, in fact, we will be distributing this decision-making power also. Uh, uh, it's very experimental. Nobody did it before in Slovenia. So uh, we hope we, <laughs> we will succeed in that. But we will also, uh, have uh, participatory governance. So for example, all those people who are working with us on this project, they were really specialists on, 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 on um, how do you say it in English, uh, cooperatives on participation, et cetera. And for them, wording is really important. They, they were, you know, that's why, you know, you see here the sentence. For this reason, we mostly use terms 
user participator participation in governance or participatory governance you know because it's like there are so many different wordings about it and we, we have to decide what it is so um so there will be different groups of people who will cooperate but that will also this making decision in a horizontal way not in hierarchical way so we they have set the standards of participation you know uh they have set the rules of participation that we were talking about when the participation is uh, genuinely feasible when it's not we were talking about motivation why to participate that it's not obvious also uh also that adopting and changing the rules of participation has to be participatory uh that we have to inform people of, about how to participate etc so it's not it's not obvious i was just thinking okay you know we will come together and then we will vote but it's not so easy so just that you know <laughs> so uh, i i i i will be sharing all this uh, this document with you so you can read it and also if you come up with some question after it when you read it you can come back to me you can uh, call me or uh, or uh, write to me with no problem so um uh, here you see that it's very important to put also some kind of legislative and regulatory fr framework for user participation. Uh, it's not a children's play. It's something that has to be taken seriously. And we can also, uh, we have also some laws in Slovenia where, for example, uh, in the, in the, when we are making a new public institution, we have council of this institution. This council is a supervising body of the institution. And uh, by the law, uh, this uh, council have to have a mandatory one employee representative and one, em when one representative from NGOs, for example. Uh, so those are things that are quite strict uh, in Slovenia. And then we have, for example, a uh, 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 network of non-governmental organizations, not just for culture, but for every all the organization in the in, in Slovenia, NGOs in Slovenia. And this network uh, of uh, non-governmental organization is the body who is selecting then the the who is who is selecting the representatives of the NGOs for different institutions. We can put you in contact with them also if you need some kind of um, you know um, uh, ideas about the procedures that they have and so. On. So uh, uh, this is like those are all the rules that we have to take into account. This is the the. Uh, organization that I was telling you about that he has rules of procedure for the selection of NGOs in public institution. Uh, we have, an, uh, we have uh, uh, um, in fact, a law in Slovenia uh, that is called an act, act on the first week of the public interest in the field of culture. And this law is also telling us a lot of things about what we have to do and how we have to how we have to 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 proceed. I'm I'm sure that you have some laws in uh, in uh, Moldova also in the field of culture. And sometimes you would be in fact uh, you could be uh, surprised that already in these laws that maybe you don't know now yet or you do, Yurusanda, you have to tell me. You can find some, you know, some anchors, anchors that that you can you you can you can build on, you know. So you have to read these laws a little bit and see if something is useful, and then come to the decision maker and say, ah, it's written here, you know. <laughs> so uh, uh, here is the uh, decision about founding public institution center rock. Uh, and uh, here, here is the ways they have also defined the ways this group uh, uh, or repeat the ways that uh, the center of facilities and services uh, will be used and what kind of users they will have. So, uh, in fact, uh, they have defined the users in the labs, what are super users who can use the places for 24 hours uh, every day. 
than the individual project rooms, the shared collective rooms, residential and working rooms, multi-purpose rooms, but all these people who will be users of those places, uh, including the, the people, the companies who will be, uh, who, who, who are renting the commercial spaces for uh, restaurants, terrace, uh, shops, etc. Everybody individually will be Center Rock member, and everybody will be able to vote about important things in Center Rock. So uh, this is also something uh, something uh, interesting that uh, that we have succeed to achieve. In fact, in Slovenia, uh, if you have a public institution and in the if you have a, a restaurant or a cafe in a public institution or if you're renting out the space for whatever conferences or other stuff, the money that you receive has to go back to the, to the city, you know, city basket, you know, so you don't have anything out of it. But here we have negotiated with the city of Ljubljana that all the money that we are earning is going back to us and we are putting it into the, the, the participatory budget, in fact. So this, we were very lucky that the the, the mayor uh, was listening to us um, in this case. Uh, so uh, so uh, um, yeah, we will have center of employees. So those are people who are employed for uh, for um, indeterminate time or determined as I am and my director, for example. For five years, we are we are we are uh, we are named in fact, and uh, then we have also contract uh, program partners, and we will have also the uh, who are in fact uh, different NGOs that we will now uh, work with uh, based on this public call for partners, and we will also have uh, outside expert mentors because. Uh, we don't have enough of employees to cover all the needs of the institution and of the of the of the of our uh, users. And all these people will be members of Center Rock, and all these people will be able to vote about things. So, this is our stakeholder organigram. In fact, uh, you can see that uh, in fact uh, we have staff, we have management, we have external advisors, uh, which will be part of, uh, of the, uh, my, uh, in fact, uh, pool of experts that I will consult for different things because I don't know everything. But for example, I know a lot about product design, but I don't know so much about fashion design. And if we will have, uh, for example, uh, organization who will, who will apply with some interesting or they will say it was an interesting project in the field of, of, I don't know, fashion design for elderly people. I can go to these partners, these external advisors, and I can ask, okay, I think this is okay, but I'm not sure. Do you think that this project is worth, uh, you know, uh, supporting or not, and so on? And then they they tell you yes or no, and then uh, you you are more equipped uh, uh, for the for the. Uh, for the for the commission, which is selecting the, the projects, to to also tell them, you know, uh, what the expert said, and then we will have many partners, users, of course, uh, and all the partners, uh, user staff, external uh, staff, and management, and in fact, uh, internal elected advisors will be members of Center Rock, but then we will have also. General public, those are neighbors, international community, city, state, uh, or schools, etc., who are coming to visit Center Rock. So those this group of uh, our colleagues was really, uh, you know, uh, they really did a great job because they also made the user scenarios for what kind of user were coming to Center Rock, so we know about it. They were imagining the the, the profiles of users. They uh, uh, they have uh, developed the models and tools how users can participate uh, in Center Rock, for example. Uh, Meta, sorry for interrupting, uh, but we are run, running a bit out okay, of time. Okay, sorry. And, 
I wanted to for the uh, oh, yeah. public no, also. No problem. Here is also the possible ways of cooperation, blah, 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 blah. I will share this or Rosanda, Rosanda, you have this document so you can share it with everybody. This is interesting. And of course we can, we can talk about it also later. But now mm -hmm. yeah, do you have some questions or <laughs> we run out of time already? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. Um, you uh, spoke about the public civic law, partnership law, and I wanted to ask if you have some examples already in uh, in Slovenia of such part, uh, let's say, successful partnership between uh, public institutions. Yeah. There is no law about it, about public civic partnerships. There is, uh, there is, uh, in fact, uh, there is the uh, regulation in the city of Ljubljana that they can do that, but there is no national law or something. Yeah, and we have very successful, uh, two successful projects like that in Ljubljana. One is, uh, one is uh, Vodnikova Kisha Literatura. It means the house of literature. It's a, a birth house of a very known Slovenian poet who was given into management uh, uh, for five years uh, to a Slovenian NGO that is dealing with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with literature. And the, another one is uh, a theater for uh, for in fact uh, for dance mainly. Uh, which is in another part of Ljubljana and it's governed and managed by another NGOs, a uh, very successful way. So in fact, uh, the city of Ljubljana owned in both cases owns the building and then they made the call for the management uh, uh, for the public civic partnership. And uh, those two organizations were, were uh, chosen and they have got uh, uh, for their work, uh, not just program money, but also the money for operational costs, et cetera. So they can in fact manage it in the way that uh, a public institution would be managed, but you know, uh, but their NGOs, for example. So we have very successful projects like that. And we can also share contacts with those people. We know them very well. They can, uh, they can, they can in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, talk to you and share with you directly. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think I have shared with you some uh, contracts and stuff like that for this uh, for these organizations. So maybe you can put it into Google Translate or something, and you will mm -hmm. understand something. But if they're just in Slovenia. And also, this regulation on public civic partnership was developed by the municipality. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. This was the initiative of the municipality. Of course, uh, of course, it's always a two-way uh, process because the NGOs, they were pushing the municipality quite a lot, we need this, we need that, et cetera. And then the municipality said, okay, let's try. We have these two buildings. One is for literature, one is for, for theater. Uh, we will put them you know, into, into, uh, into management of NGOs and let's see how it works. And it works very well. Mm -hmm. uh, both institutions they have uh, organization institutions they have really uh, you know uh, they, they, they have really uh, good good teams they have uh, great programs uh, they're very big success in fact yeah, thank you and now I am opening the mic for the questions yeah. uh, from my colleagues uh, if you have any please um, uh, take the mic and Feel free. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Hi. Uh, hi, Meta. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was a very uh, interesting and really, really insightful. Um, I have think I think I have five pages of notes just because <laughs> I was so inspired by right by what you mentioned. But um, I I want to understand a little bit better this process in the preparation phase you're talking about with the inclusion of the participatory process of stakeholders. Yeah, because you mentioned you have like a uh, actually a, a two year um, process with 300 stakeholders included in the first part only. Yeah, and I maybe you could put us a few more words on how mm -hmm. you chose the stakeholders, how you reach out to them, and how you actually manage to to mm -hmm. include and make a process where everybody felt that they were were heard. Yeah. 
In fact, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we were part of this European project that was called Second Chance. Um, there were like similar projects going on in five uh, European cities. And uh, in fact, we have uh, made the blueprint of this kind of participatory process. Uh, why? Because, uh, because as I have told you, you know, it's like uh, developing of new institutions, etc. There is always a big conflict about it and so on, because somebody needs that, somebody says it's shit, somebody says, you know, everything is agreed in advance and so on. So it's always like that, you know. And then with my team, we said, okay, we will do it differently. We will really ask people, open it, you know, we will show ourselves more vulnerable. This, I think it's very important. We will show that we don't know anything, everything. And we are asking people, you know, please come help us because somehow with my team, we have believed in this kind of, of collective knowledge of collective, you know, intelligence that people from different parts, uh, they know best what they need. They know best what their need, professional needs are. That's why we have to ask them and we have to discuss with them. With the city of Ljubljana at that time, you know, it was a little bit, you know, like they were watching us like, well, what do you want to do, you know, because they were still remembered. Uh, 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 Rosanda will probably remember it from the Mol Mol Moldova. But in socialist countries, we had this kind of uh, participatory governance already and uh, stuff like that in our uh, big companies, factories, etc. But it was fake, you know. So all the elder generations, they were connecting uh, uh, participation with some kind of fake participation. And uh, not just the decision makers, but also the, the members of the, the public somehow. So we had very difficult time, you know, how to how to how to make this, you know, and how people will come will come to trust us somehow, because in the old times, you know, it was always fake. <laughs> so in fact, we said that okay, we will do that, but at the end of every step, there has to be an open public discussion, and there has to be a result. People they have to see that if they invested their time somewhere, that this knowledge was implemented somewhere in a physical, you know, thing, uh, in a new, you know, strategy, in a new prototype, in something like that. Because when people are coming to this kind of uh, focus groups and stakeholders events, you know, uh, we have to think that most of those people that we were working with were freelancers, they had their own businesses. And two or three hours of focus groups for them, it's not as two or three hours of focus groups for uh, uh, some, you know, you know, uh, person who is employed by a city or a state or something like that, because they have to come out of their, their, their studios, they have to, to give us this time and this money, you know, to, to, to participate at that time, you know, everybody wanted them to participate for free. Uh, and uh, if there, there is no result, they will not be coming anymore because they have much more important things to do with their lives, you know. So that's why, for example, when we have ordered to, uh, to uh, this research company uh, uh, sweet, uh, uh, a SWOT analysis, the research company did the SWOT analysis, uh, uh, in my opinion, not a very good one. But we said, okay, we will open it and we will show this SWOT analysis to everybody, you know, because you, have, you, can, you can have the situation when you, 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 you order a SWOT analysis and then, you know, the, you just use, you know, what is good for you and then the other stuff, you put it in the drawer and nobody sees it. But we, put it, we did it public in a very, very big public, uh, public event where more than 100 people came to listen to this. And they criticized everything with, and they were right, you know, because it was not done in a very good way. They gave us completely different information, et cetera. So, uh, and then we, uh, we, we, we corrected everything, you know, we took time to correct everything. We communicate the correction back and people saw that we are serious about it, you know? So I think this is very important. The next thing that was very important for us in this participatory process is that we were paying people who were collaborating with us. We called them out on an open call. 
So it wasn't like my friends will come and then, you know, they will tell us, tell me what I want to hear. But there was an open call. People could apply to this open call. We selected them in the way that we were covering the most uh, most uh, uh, different uh, different profiles and ages and so on. And then uh, for their time, we were paying them because uh, in this way, we have also showed that we respect their time and we respect their knowledge. And this was also one step more to 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 this uh, to this uh, uh, for people to making to people for people to trust us because we were showing respect to them. So you paid all three hundred stakeholders. No, no, no. We didn't pay all 300 stakeholders in the sense that we would pay uh, like uh, people who were coming to the to the public debates because we were calculating also people in the public debates. But for the 90 out of this, uh, for the 70, for example, out of these 300, they were paid. Also, the international stakeholders, uh, we paid their travel to Ljubljana, we paid their hotels, etc. It was not like come here and, and, and share your knowledge for free, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and then when we were continuing, for example, uh, like uh, uh, with Roglab, in Roglab we had public programs like workshops and stuff like that. So organizations who were working with us, who are our partner organizations, also uh, selected based on a public call for partnerships. Uh, they were paid for the workshops that they were developing, etc. And uh, uh, the the uh, users who were the like uh, individual users, uh, they were not paid for their work. They were in fact uh, they were in fact pay paying small membership for Roblab. So we were testing what kind of price we can put, you know, on this kind of services that it's still acceptable, but it's not for free because we have seen that if you were giving the services like 3D printing, like uh, teaching of business model, like workshops for free, then people thought, and it's also something that is very uh, known, I think in different uh, ex-socialist countries that when it's for free, it's not worth anything, you know? So you have to put a, at least a small price on something so people take it seriously somehow, yeah. So later on, you know, in the in the uh, so this process from this uh, this um, uh, prototyping process was uh, took place from 2012 to 2019, and in 2019 we uh, we somehow uh, collected all the information that we had from this field work. And we have uh, we have made uh, uh, we have designed new plans of places of services in the new center rock, and then we have again invited a certain number of stakeholders that were paid for their work uh, and for their consultations, and uh, more or less you know we were for we, we always for, had foreseen that three hours for example were work, but then you know the debates got so big that you know that people just stayed and you know and and, and stayed a little bit more time but uh, but uh, all the people that were really investing their time that would, weren't just like passive listeners who were doing the comments but who were working on things on plans uh, who were sharing their knowledge they were all paid for this yeah mm -hmm. thank you Meta. Fred do you have any other questions or of course. <laughs> yeah. um, I have one more, um, and it, it's about the the financing of the, the center now, because just to understand a bit more, you have both commercial, um, like rent That's places, you have rent, um, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have this uh, law that you have to get some payment from the municipality, I understand. Yes. Uh, yeah. So how did you, uh, is it, and maybe it's a stupid question, I just need to understand, because is it an actual yeah. agreement you have in a, of in course, a piece of, of paper? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's an agreement with the municipality. The municipality has to pay for our programs and has to pay for our staff and mm -hmm. has to pay for our operational cost. 70% of our uh, income will be, it will be the money from the municipality. 30% we have to earn by ourselves. And we are earning this 30% by uh, the rentals. We're earning this 30% by uh, by European projects, 
uh, by memberships also and stuff like that. Yeah. And then there is this uh, super uh, specific uh, law uh, uh, or uh, agreement uh, with the municipality that the money that comes from the commercial uh, activity yeah, can stay, comes can stay, can in the stay budget. In the of, can mm -hmm. stay in the budget. This is very important for us uh, because in this way we can offer more to the to the users. You know. Otherwise, you know, the money would go to the municipality and then the city government would decide, you know, how to distribute the money, you know, from the whole, you know, but in this way, it goes directly to the, to the institution. And also in this way, I think it's, you know, it's, uh, in, uh, it's also, also, you somehow connect the whole building, you know, you know it's not the shops, shopkeepers and the restaurant keepers uh, keepers are there and then you know the creatives are somewhere else but somehow everybody is uh, is somehow uh, dependent on each other also because and i think that this is also the way to 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 develop respect to one, one another because the creatives will know that you know the guys who are owning the restaurant and the guys who are owning who are running the the shops they're paying for them also and the guys who are running the shops and who are running the restaurants will know that uh, people are coming here because there are interesting programs because there are creative people and so on so you know in this way i think we are also in a way in a, in a, in a secondary way also developing this kind of uh, social cohesion mm. Yeah, it's like an, an, an financial ecosystem that also yes. becomes a social ecosystem in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Is it then already defined? I guess it must be the 70% you receive from municipality is earmarked in some way. You can spend it on mm -hmm. specific, it's for the secretariat and the directors. We, and can, all we, can, we can spend, we will have 18, uh, 18 employees me included, like uh, this is written in our uh, act of, uh, uh, in, you know, our foundation act. And then we'll have, and with this money, we will pay the, the salaries for employees, the salaries for external mentors. We will pay the, all the operational costs like electricity, water, uh, taxes, uh, stuff like that. We will pay uh, for the amortization of the machines, uh, for the 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 repair, re, re, reparation of the machines, etc. We will pay with this money for our uh, for our uh, uh, residential programs uh, because uh, people will be paid to he stay here in Slovenia uh, or for production costs. We'll go this money for the people in the residences, for the people in individual studios. This money will go for uh, uh, for programs or for of our partners also because we have different ways of partnerships. One is uh, ways that we can. Uh, one possibility is, is that we buy the program for them from them, so they develop it for us and we buy it from them, and then we are free to use it. Uh, we have the moral moral. Um, um, uh, the material, the material uh, rights to it for two years, and then after two years they can do with this program what they want, and then we have uh, the possibility of co-production when where we pay a little bit for their program and they pay a little bit for their program, so we made their life easier in that way. But some organizations they just want to use the space, and in this way, you know, we have the 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 model of uh, guest program and where they are just guests and they have to pay for certain costs of the, of the, of the operational costs and technical stuff and so on. So uh, different organizations have different needs, you know, so that's why we didn't put just one model of cooperation, but different ways of cooperation in this, uh, um, in this uh, mm -hmm. program. But this, uh, these uh, programs, this, uh, uh, like uh, uh, co-production and stuff of programs is just for local organizations because we believe that somebody from I don't know Moldova will not come to I don't know just make uh, make uh, 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 for example uh, exhibition in Slovenia or whatever 
but uh, uh, for educational programs, uh, for workshops, etc., for residencies, uh, uh, there is also a possibility of international cooperation. Yeah, and maybe some corporations will want to come to use your spaces. They Google. can't. They can't. <laughs> Because, uh, because if it's not, uh, because we are, our values are very strictly put and uh, in our values, we have written that uh, um, we are supporting the projects and, uh, and organizations that are doing, uh, that are, have uh, uh, developing their products and pro projects in, for public good. So if it's not for public good, if it's just some, you know, some BMW wanting to sell their cars, they can, they don't have the money to, to rent the space, in fact, because mm -hmm. they can't, yeah. Okay. We, we decided for that. And also we will be renting out, for example, the, our, our um, lecture halls for different, uh, for different conferences, et cetera. But also those uh, organizations uh, or, or companies who will want to have a conference in, in Center Rock, they will have to show somehow that they're also uh, doing something in the directions of sustainable development goals of, uh, of, uh, of, you know, we have to be aware of climate change or stuff like that. And we are now working with the municipality of Ljubljana with their uh, department for tourism. Uh, and with their department, who is also uh, responsible for uh, conference uh, tourism, for example, and they are attaining different uh, fairs and uh, in the world where they they are uh, proposing Ljubljana as a destination. And we already agreement with we have an agreement with them when they are proposing Central Rock. Uh, they uh, have to be clear that this is just for the conferences, which are, you know, uh, into uh, within our values, not just for any conference, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. okay. so if you want to, for example, yeah, we had a lot of questions like that, like people were asking, yeah, but we have a, we have a, 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 a we have a, I don't know, an architectural bureau and we want to rent the studio. Yeah, you cannot rent it. You can just get it for free, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to get it for free, you have to you have to share our values. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, do anybody have uh, other questions? Um, or we can... Uh, Conclude. I would still ask this question. Hello, thank you for Hello. doing the presentation. <clears throat> uh, what would be your still? I understand that the project is not yet implemented. It's it will be implemented, and mm -hmm. then see what works and what doesn't. Of course. <laughs> Related to the <clears throat> to the participatory standards, what mm -hmm. would be your personal minimal participatory uh, standards or uh, model of, uh, of participation, which you would say, okay, this is a successful project because it it fits to this minimal requirements. How I think I think that that, uh, <laughs> that if there would be like sixty percent of users that would vote for participatory budget and propose the project, this would be a great success, you know. But uh, but we know that you know before that we will really have to educate and teach the users about this option because uh, it's not it's not you know people are not using it yet you know many 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 NGOs in Slovenia were trying to make some kind of participatory projects etc. Uh, Rusanda, you are from art circle, so you know that you know in arts there is a lot of ideas about this participation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know it's always just on this kind of theoretical, artistic uh, level, etc. What we want to do is really, you know, to show that you know uh, that uh, as I was saying before uh, to Frederike that uh, that uh, when you are participating, you see concrete results of your participation, you know. Because I think in our democracies, we always have, we all have these problems. We are voting for presidents, we are voting for parliament, we are voting for whatever, and then we don't see the result of our engagement, you know. And here, 
we want to we want to make uh, the right situation the right uh, the right model that people when they vote for the participatory budget they really see it in a transparent way okay this money was spent for this and that money was spent for that when people will be part of uh, the the commissions for for uh, for uh, for creatives who are applying for individual studios they will have to see okay you know those guys that we thought that were the best you know really got the place not some brothers and sisters and whoever from whoever you know so i think that 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 if we succeed you know my my successful you know my like uh, my my ideal success would be that uh, that uh, at the beginning we have a little, like 60% of people who are who are voting in this participatory budget uh, and then that, uh, that there are more and more people who are voting for this budget and that we are also heightening this budget like progressively, you know, when people know how to responsibly use this tool. This would be my, like, you know, I would like to put half of the budget of the center, of the program budget of the center or on the participatory platform. So it would Ideally. be related <laughs> to the program budget mainly, like the money. And also we... infrastructural budget, yeah, program and infrastructure, because you can vote either for programs <laughs> or you can propose either new programs or you can propose a uh, new infrastructure and the improvement of this infrastructure and stuff like that. And from the users who were with whom you try to prototype different uh, future uses of the center. Mm -hmm. How many of them actually will be there using the spaces? Well, there yeah. already you have to know that there already we already have uh, like uh, regular users in Roglab because it is a production space. It is very small; it's twenty-eight square meters. But we have a lot of partners, and for example, if we don't have enough space, we 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 are working with different uh, universities who have space, or with other cultural institutions, or with some NGOs who have space, and that's how we have made a big network of partners already. And uh, we have uh, a lot of individual users who are already coming to to, to Roglab, but now with different uh, with different, and those will stay for sure. But then with different, uh, with different uh, workshops, we will have new users, for example, because we will have more space to offer. There will be also a place to hang out. This is very important because now in the Rock Lab, we have just 28 square meters and you just come there to, to produce something and then you go away because you, you don't have a sofa to just hang out and to talk to somebody. So we, we, we will, uh, so many of them will stay. And those who are prototyping, uh, more or less, they will stay uh, as individual users of uh, labs. And if they have some kind of interesting products in development that are good for society, that are good for environment, they will be able to apply for individual uh, working spaces also. And um, may I ask you, if what was exactly the conflict with the users which you mentioned there were conflict mm -hmm. with former users who yeah. wanted the space and they didn't want to leave it yeah that in fact the, uh, the, the difference between two what were positions well you have to understand that in fact it's uh, it's like this kind of development projects are always very complex and there are a lot a lot of interest groups who are uh, who have their ideas about what to do with this kind of space. So one of the groups were those uh, people who were squatting the, the, the former premises of the rock factory. One group of people are uh, like uh, uh, students from universities who had their ideas how they would use the space. One group of people were different uh, creative businesses who had their ideas how to use the space one group of people were like, uh, I don't know, were, were uh, different companies like Sanda, you were uh, talking about different corporations who had the ideas that you should use this as a, I don't know what, you know, as a penthouses, you know. Uh, so in fact, when you are developing this kind of project, you have to negotiate, you know, with all this interest, interest. And you cannot just, uh, in fact, uh, 
uh, for example, for the city of Ljubljana, if they would say to the squatters, okay, you have good ideas, so you just use it as you want, they, then they would li leave out all the others users, you know, because all the others, other interests for this space. So you have to negotiate really a lot about it. So, but we have to say that those people, the activists and the artists and so on, who squatted the, the, the rock uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning, this was not the first secondary use. It the first secondary use began already in the 90s because the space was used by the, by the, uh, by the Museum of um, Architecture and Design. And it was used also by Break Festival, that was a festival for young artists, etc., uh, in the 90s. But then, in the in the uh, in the 2006, started the second secondary use, uh, where the first generation, so generation of squatters, came and they said, "Okay, uh, we want to use this place for temporary until the local community." Th this means the the all the other interest groups uh, decide what to do about this space, you know. And then uh, years were passing by, those first generation of users were also involved into our stakeholders meetings, into our focus groups, etc. But years were passing by and the city of Ljubljana either, you know, I don't know because I'm not <laughs> like the politician, but I'm a, I'm a development expert, uh, Maybe they didn't have enough money. Maybe they didn't have enough political will. Maybe they had different interests juggling with, you know. So we don't know why, but they didn't start the works. They didn't start the works for a long time. And then the generations of the users changed. And the next generation of these, uh, these activists and artists was a little bit different. Uh, and they said that uh, they didn't, this changed around 2014, they said they didn't want temporary use, but they want to use the place forever and they want to have exclusive use, you know, for this place. And then the city of Ljubljana was negotiating with them and the uh, negotiation went into mediation to the court and the uh, city of Ljubljana proposed to those people that they could use uh, 600 square meters of the New York Center free of like no strings attached, but they refused that because they said all or, or nothing. And then the, the court decided that uh, those people the, the who squatted Roko factory, they had to leave and they were evicted in 2021. Yeah. So uh, this was the conflict, in fact. This was the basis of the conflict. And also the, those, uh, those guys, you know, they were persuaded Although we were communicating through Rock Lab, through our activities, that this will be open space, that this will be space uh, like uh, uh, that will be uh, used, uh, uh, that everybody will be able to use, and will be most of the stuff will be free of charge and so on. They always had the communication that uh, they were persuaded that this is a gentrification project. And this will be an elitist institution where nobody will have access to. And uh, I don't know, but I think that they were persuaded, you know, that uh, they were genuinely persuaded they're, they're, they are, you know, protecting this space from gentrification, you know, and from, from, from capital and stuff like that, you know. So... Uh, That's it. Is it somehow related to? I I've been to Ljubljana yeah. times, uh, but I was in two thousands, and I remember Metelkovo Mesto. This uh, also yeah. What did Metelkovo Mesto is also Metelkovo Mesto is also property of the city of Ljubljana. And I remember uh, back then there were rumors that the city would like to actually take yeah, but you know. Some you know how the cities are. The cities are always, you know, juggling with, 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 with land somehow and with the property and so on. And yeah, they had in in certain times in Metilkova also the idea that you know they would like to make something else, some apartments, whatever. I don't know. I don't remember really very very well. But at the end, they negotiated with these users of uh, of Metilkova city. 
that the that the the that they can stay there, you know, and uh, that uh, they can use these places free of charge. In fact, most of the organizations that are in the Tilkova city are, are subsidized by the city of Ljubljana and are subsidized by the Mi Ministry of Culture. They're calling themselves independent, whatever, but they're not independent. They're subsidized like all the other organizations. And I think that although I liked the idea of Matilkova very much at the beginning, and I still have many friends there, you know, who are like me, 50 years old, I think it's wrong that people who are 50 years old are still running this kind of spaces, you know. So people who squatted these places, they're still there, you know, for 30 years. And I think, uh, what we don't know to do very well in, in Slovenia is how to share spaces, you know, is how to make it, you know, circulate, is how to share it with the new generations, etc. Because now we have problem in Ljubljana, for example, that there is not enough spaces because the elderly generations were fighting and they got the spaces. And now the younger generation was, would also like to fight and get the spaces, but they're not enough, you know. So we have to invent the ways to share the spaces to you to, to to have this shared uh, shared uh, shared uh, uh, model of 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 using the spaces not for just for one institutions for for different institutions for network of partners for different users in different years not the not in the way that it is in Ljubljana in many times that you know you get an atelier as an artist as you are an artist probably and then you stay there until you die you know? <laughs> it's like you know, it's it's not possible because uh, the space is scarce in the city. So we we I think in my personal view and uh, in my belief, I think we have to learn how to share space. You know, not just how to control it. But yeah, just to 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 understand clearly, the Metelkova somehow got gentrified or not? I mean, did no, it no, not at all. Metelkova is uh, Metelkova is uh, is uh, is uh, in fact an old castle in Ljubljana, a uh, military yeah. castle, and there are a lot of clubs, uh, exhibition spaces, etc., that are all run by uh, by NGOs. Uh, and uh, with no uh, with no interference of the city of Ljubljana, the city of Ljubljana is just like giving them based on the open cost and so on, uh, program money for uh, for projects or for for multi year pro programs etc. Some of them are subsidized, some of them are not. Most of them are subsidized. Yeah, but the, nothing is gentrified there. No, no. And maybe may I turn a bit differently the perspective mm -hmm. of Rogue? Is it uh, possibly perceived or was perceived by those squatters as a kind of project-based uh, logic uh, center in the sense that you come for not even for one but three years? Still, it, it's much better than receiving fi funding for one year and doing projects on one year basis, but even three year basis for them would look like uh, a, a kind of... Um, it's very it's very problematic. Not, not a very, very sustainable model in the sense that uh -huh. even three year uh, circulation wouldn't actually make you uh, develop your, I don't know, artistic practice in a sustainable way. There, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be, we are not, we are not uh, giving away the spaces for, for developing artistic practices. There will not be places for artists because we have like 90, 90 individual uh, artistic ateliers for visual artists in Ljubljana and none for designers, for architects, for, for, for artisans, etc. That's why we have dedicated those 19 uh, spaces, those 19 ateliers for those people who are doing applied arts because there is a lack of it. And uh, you can develop in, in this field, in the field of uh, design or applied arts, you can develop uh, uh, your prototype or your product uh, between one, you need one or be between one and three years. That's why we made this uh, this limit. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's project, it's, it's product based. It's not like uh, given for life for developing your life vision or whatever. Yeah, but this is what I mean that mm -hmm. it's somehow re resembling to me another uh, open call logic uh, where people are granted money for one year, sometimes for three years, but it's still in this. Uh, it, it it doesn't actually make the work 
more sustainable in the end, especially if it's a the problem, the problem in, uh, I know what is probably in Moldova, but the problem in Slovenia is that there is no market for arts, you know. So in fact, uh, in fact, you can, you can subsidize people just for life or for nothing, you know, because other, because they, they, nobody is selling anything, you know. So this is a big problem, you know, but uh, our system, you know, was made for, I don't know, maybe 200 artists and for, 40 NGOs, but now we have just in Ljubljana 5,000 NGOs and I, I, I don't, countless artists, you know, and you cannot, like, it's not sustainable, the system itself is not sustainable because you cannot subsidize those people for eternity somehow, and it's not fair and people are lacking money, but, you know, it's like until now, uh, our decision makers haven't yet, you know, developed an idea how to make this sustainable. Uh, for example, in the field of creative industries, where I'm mostly working lately, uh, we had a great, uh, this great national project that was called Center for Creativity, which was financed by, uh, by, uh, co co uh, by the, the, the funds for cohesion, territorial cohesion. And uh, they, have give, they were giving away this kind of four or three year money for development of products, et cetera. So it helped a little bit, but we have seen that, you know, if you want to develop this field, you know, you have to think how to sustainably finance, uh, finance this production in the way that you, 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 you close the ecosystem somehow, you know, that you, you, you close the circle of production. And for example, that's why we are now uh, with uh, my colleague trying to get some allies in the in the ministries of technology the ministry of culture in the in the fund for for uh, for entrepreneurship etc uh, so we can tell them look you know the because they don't understand that entrepreneurs in the field of creative industries are not the same as entrepreneurs in the field of uh, as entrepreneurs in the field of uh, digital uh, entrepreneurship for example because in the field of digital entrepreneurship, you mostly develop products and services that you will sell as soon as they start to work, you know. But in the field of creative industries, architecture, design, or uh, artisana, et cetera, uh, this work is more based on the author. And the authors are not just developing something to sell it after two or three years, but they want to build on it and so on. So it's a completely different process that those uh, those uh, uh, those uh, different foundations that are taking care of entrepreneurship and uh, business models for those people and so on, they don't understand that they need some kind of other model. So we're trying to, to do that. I completely agree with you that, uh, that uh, you know, if you don't have, for example, what I think it's very difficult in our countries is that we have centralized systems where, you know, we used to pay artists, you know, uh, we, we, where we used to pay artists from different ministries, from institutions, etc. But now those institutions, they don't have so much money anymore. They, uh, there are many more artists that they used to be, but we don't have any market. We don't have the system of mecenat because the, 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 we, we have different taxes system. So, uh, artists more or less are stuck in between. Uh, on one hand, you're given, you know, a little money just to survive, but on the other hand, you can't plan anything. You can't plan, you know, to buy an apartment. You can't plan to develop, a, to, to make a family. You can't plan to go for holidays, you know, because you never know what will happen next month, next year, next whatever. So this, this precariat in, in the field of art, in, in the artistic field is very horrible. And uh, and I have many friends who are artists and uh, it's like, I admire you all who are still, you know, sticking up with this business, but I know why you are doing it because you have no option because you're an artist. You were like, you are made like that, you know, you have to do it. Otherwise you're not well, you know? So, uh, but I don't have, I don't have answer for this big, uh, big, uh, difficulty in fact you know but uh i understood your question and i also can you know elaborate more on it because uh, this uh, 
final final uh, squatters in the rock factory when uh, we told them, yeah, but you will be able to apply to the project. They said, yeah, but we don't want to apply to any contests, you know, because it's, they, they, they are really like, uh, they're they, they're really hardcore activists, you know, they're, they, they, they're anarchists, so they don't believe in system, they don't believe in open cause, they don't believe in anything, but we as a public institution or city as a government, they, they just have those tools, you know, they don't have other tools, you know, to, to, to share the public good, public money or public, uh, public, uh, um, um, public um, spaces. Yeah. Thank you for elaborating on, on this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe last yeah. question. Uh, I cannot not ask it. <laughs> As a bicycle user, what happened to the factory? You what happened to the factory? Up? Yeah, in fact, as uh, many factories in Slovenia, this is a very sad story, but uh, we had a very unfair tradition in the 90s. So uh, uh, probably it was the same story in Moldova, I suppose, but uh, before the before the this transition from socialist to capitalist system, uh, of course, all the factory were public factories. You know, it was public good, and before they were public factories, they were private factories. But after the Second World War, they were nationalized. So they were nationalized after Second World War, and after after the transition, after the 90s, after our separation from Yugoslavia, they were privatized again, you know. But they weren't, like some of them were given back to the initial users, the, the original users, but mostly the, 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 the high managers of those company privatized those companies. So the workers, they stayed without anything. And a very small percentage of Slovenian managerial elite got very rich. So, so in fact, uh, so in fact, this factory had the same fate. So it was uh, first privatized and then sold to the Hippo Bank, and then the city of Ljubljana bought it from the Hippo Bank because it's also uh, 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 it's also a cultural architectural cultural heritage, and they wanted to keep it like that. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, and uh, the factories were, not, the, the bicycles were not produced anymore from the 90s on. But you know that when I was 15, I was a student in the local neighborhood gymnasium. And I went to the internship to this factory because in that time we had an obligatory internship. Uh, the ones who were in the classical gymnasium we had to go to the factories to see what the real life looked like. <laughs> so I know this factory when it was still working. I know it is the secondary use. Uh, uh, I was developing its uh, tertiary use, and now I will see her, its third life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my, it's a, my question was uh, yeah, in the sense that it's a pity that the bicycle itself as pro production, but also as use uh, has less uh, chance now in Slovenia because it's a very democratic kind of transport and it talks yeah. about how we share the city and how we... Yes, yes. Bas in, bicycles are used quite a lot in, in Ljubljana also because we have very bad <laughs> bus system. <laughs> so if you're faster to go anywhere with the bike. And the bicycles from Rock, they were known all over Yugoslavia. Everybody had a bike from Rock factory. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's also it's also in a symbolical place for many people from Slovenia, for many generations who still used uh, uh, who were still using bicycles from Rock factory. Yeah. 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 Uh, colleagues, we have a question from Stella, but Rock stands for for what? Uh, Rock stands for horn. Like, like, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know what what the name came from, but uh, but I can research it for you more if you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, so the the factory was also called Drog, you know. It was uh, also the bicycles were called Rock were called Rock bicycles. It's a brand, in fact. Yeah. So now it's a Rock factory. Mm. 
Yeah, it's like giant. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, whatever, yeah, giant bicycle. Or like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. like a Ford car or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I want to thank you very much, uh, Meta, for uh, this yeah. uh, wonderful presentation. And I think uh, it will, we, it is, uh, and it will serve as an inspiration for yeah. our good model also. And I want to thank also the participants and my colleagues for asking questions. And yeah. maybe uh, uh, sometime in uh, autumn, we will have a wonderful, nice laboratory where we will work on participatory think... models. And yeah. maybe, yeah, and maybe we, uh, we will invite you also to participate in that. With, with pleasure, because I think it's really, it's possible to make this kind of changes, but one, you have to be persistent. Two, you have to have a little bit of luck also. I have to say that the, the, the civil servants from the municipality of Ljubljana, like we were lucky with them because they, they had open ears, although at the beginning it was a little bit strange for them what we are doing, but they were open to, to discussion, open to novelties, etc. So you have to be a little bit lucky also. So I was just sharing the, the, the call for international programs with you. If you want to have a look and if some of you are designers or if some of you are architects or doing working in the field of applied arts, we will also have a call for residences in spring. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Thank uh, you. And, and see you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you for the invitation. Good luck with everything. Bye-bye. Good luck.